Well, welcome back, everyone, you lovelies at home, to the State Farm Analyst Desk, as it is time for Cloud9. They are eager to claim a win and guarantee their spot in the groups for the sixth time in their history. And based on what they've shown so far, this should be well within their reach. The Unicorns of Love, unfortunately, haven't shown that much yet. I'm going to go to Emily first, of course, our resident, I would say Megamind, because she knows a lot about literally <laughs> every region, but especially yep. the LCS. Uh, talk to me about how what we from what we've seen they have grown since msi and mm -hmm. they are showing a more complete team so far so i'm going to reiterate something that i said after watching them day one and then again based on what we saw from them yesterday i do think that the most important thing about this c9 team is that we they're building on the foundation that we did see at msi right so we saw that a lot of those games could go either way and it came down to some really key miscommunications from their top side of the map so blabber and perks not being able to link up with fudge well enough and then um because of roster changes and because of you know just general like miscommunication on the team they had a very up and down summer so when i look at their performance thus far the thing that makes me happiest about it is that that top side is communicating so well so regardless of what fudge is going to do with his lane based on matchup and i think that's where he really like tends to shine in terms of his wave management i think that blabber and perks have shown that they follow up on it really well and that's what's unlocking c9 Yes, Chronicler, uh, I think it's looked very comfortable for the side of C9, right? As it actually should in the planes, but that's not always a given. What to you have been the, the biggest strengths that you've seen out of Cloud9 so far? Uh, and this is something that's somewhat immeasurable, but to me is still a really uh, good uh, indicator of like how a team is feeling and how I expect them to do uh, as they go further into the tournament. And it's that C9 kind of got their swagger back. Um, I feel like the confidence really took a big hit after some of the critical mistakes that they made at MSI. And I'm just happy to see a C9 that's like, Emily already put it very well analytically, like what they're actually doing, but a C9 that's like walking the line between, you know, maybe not pressing the R button just in time, but then still <laughs> making everything else work incredibly well. What can, uh, like, I think it's they super exciting. Win. They can't win, they, they make a lot of mistakes. Perks. From now on, he asked us to, right? Yeah. Yeah. X. Um, well, hey, that could be like compliment on his physique too, right? So it works both ways. Uh, they can't they can't ever win, right? They make one mistake, but they're very convincing. Um, but coming back to the point for Cloud9, I think we're looking at them not just in the vein of what can they do in planes, but also beyond, right? Group stage and hopefully mm -hmm. after that. And Emily, um, something you brought out in the pre-show is that stylistically, we've seen different looks and that could be the most high value thing we've seen from them if you think about the competition that's coming. Yeah, so this on screen, we have, you know, the Malphite composition that we saw. And I think the big thing that I noticed in their two games yesterday that I really liked is the fact that they did show variability in how they wanted to play. So um, I, I really liked seeing that from them and hopefully they can keep it up and show us uh, some continued flexibility in drafts. We'll also get the next draft up, I believe, but uh, it just showcased once again that they are able to kind of flex when they need to and that will be very important. But there's always a chance that it doesn't work out every single game, Chronicler. Uh, so they need to beat UOL to lock that first place. Otherwise, there is a tiebreaker game versus Detonation Focus Me for first. So what are the priorities here for Cloud9? Just to, like, take no risks, right? Just to lock this first place up. Uh, if you want to take the safest route at C9, I don't know if they will. Because, uh, like I said, I think they're very fun, <laughs> but they, they like to tiptoe the line. Uh, I think you just make sure that you get a good matchup for Perks. Perks has shown that he is in great form at the moment, and it also ties in to uh, what I believe is going to be the main win condition for UL if they do somehow clutch it out, and that's trying to snowball the map through uh, No Man's. So if you can mitigate that by getting Perks a matchup in which either he's really comfortable in or a neutral matchup and he gets attention from either Blabber or Vulcan, I think SC9, um, just by sheer force on the rest of the map, you should feel pretty confident oh, yeah. uh, in your chances. By individual talent as well. Let's see what happens and let's see if Cloud9 can secure a spot in the world's group stage as we leave it to the lovely Pastry and Mark. Welcome back, everyone. It is potentially our final game of today as Cloud9 are looking to lock up first and push themselves into the main stage of the World Championships. And in their way, Boxy, is Unicorns of Love. Yep, and I know this might be sacrilege to NA fans, but a part of me is hoping they drop this game. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm awake. I woke up to cast. Yeah? 
you know, I'm only gonna do two games if they win. If they lose, I do four. Exactly. It's more, more fun. Exactly. It's always tough to choose between more games and uh, North America <laughs> staying undefeated. And I, this is very respectful. I was almost wondering if like, well, Perks is playing melee mids. Yeah. Like, he definitely could smash a cast in lane if he's feeling up to it, but they're just saying, you know what? We are not taking that risk. We want this win. We will just take our part of least resistance into the main event of the World Championships. No Man's Casting it, get it out of there. I was gonna say, No Man's Casting is really good, and it's actually been 100% banned against him in this tournament so far. Uh, not all of it is first banned blue side, but I feel like, you know, there hasn't been a ton of stuff that Unicorns of Love has shown a success on. And so, you know, even though it hasn't been played yet, you keep removing the, the obvious ones and uh, take it from there. You know, Unicorns of Love are having a really tough go of it. They were, for a period of time, one of these standout teams in play-ins and from the minor regions. And it feels like this was a tough group, to be fair. Yes. I mean, TCL has been incredible. Japan has been leveling up year after year after year to the point where now they might be the strongest of the minor regions. Um, but it does feel a little sad to see what had been such a staple potentially end up winless in plans. Yeah, for sure. I guess we'll have to see what happens here. As you said, if they win, there's more games. If not, we're done. Well, well if done they win too, zero. to be fair, their hopes are still alive. Also true. <laughs> they are, I, was, I was saying the C9 angle, but if they win, actually, this is a huge game for them. They they are able to play a tiebreaker against Beyond Gaming, who don't look that incredible, to be fair. So there is a world where they can bounce back and end up taking taking it. Yep, so we'll recap the draft real quick. With Kassadin, we mentioned Lucian continuing to get some attention here in draft Aurelio on the C9 side again, continuing to respect the power of potentially boss and maybe no man's even as well. Keanu, Rise, and Jarvan all Ooh. getting taken out there as MF continue to be first pick, and that is a Senna selected there. I believe that is the first Senna of the tournament. I don't yes. think I've seen it anywhere else. So I'm curious what they're going to do with it. Um, if there is some unique pairing that they specifically want Senna with, she does tend to enable some tricky stuff in the bot lane. If it's fasting Senna or not, um, we'll have to see. Could even enable Lee Sin. That is a combination Ooh, from uh, Lee Sin Senna does a while exist. back. It is a thing. Uh, whether it will be a thing this game or not, uh, I'm going to say I doubt it, but you never know. MF LeBlanc, there was a very nice start here. Perks is ready to play. He's off Silas Duty. He's, you know, I guess maybe unlocked the ability to draft LeBlanc here. I mean, the LeBlanc also makes the early casting ban make even more sense. Uh, it is a matchup that, you know, LeBlanc has some power in early, but then casting starts to really outscale it. So going up against Nomads, if you want to early pick the LeBlanc and kind of skill check him, because LeBlanc is one of these blindable champions for the most part, that even if you pick like a, a Lissandra counter, which we saw earlier in the day, yeah, we did see Lissandra get a solo kill with Electric Q uh, as, as the rune choice, but you know, it's a skill matchup for the most part. So um, early on taking LeBlanc saying, no man, what do you have? You have not been having a great tournament. I'm going to pick one of my signature champions, do something about it. And looks like Silas is the answer, which is definitely not something to, you know, super challenge in lane, but again, if you can get out and affect the map, Silas is so good when he's unlocked from the mid lane and able to play in skirmishes or even bigger fights, you know, in kind of the early stages of the mid game. Uh, Xin Zhao also for Lava. I believe his first look on this champion this tournament obviously has played it plenty of times before in his career. But uh, looks like the bottom lane is going to finally eat some bats. This is maybe going to be Vulcan's first game, not on Leona. I don't think he's played it literally every game, oh, but it on, might be. Three, three for three on All right, Leona. All right, never mind. I did have that right. So Rakan going to get taken out there cool. and uh, maybe lose the Leo as well. Uh, we'll see what they will ban. I mean, it is seemingly matched positions, depending on what you end up doing with this Senna. Yep. Uh, but right now, it's looking like Marksman mid and, and jungle. So you will see these kind of bans where, all right, well, you get rid of the Rakan, even though Vulcan hasn't played it. We have seen him play it. Um, and I wonder what they're setting up potentially. I, I assume they'll go support last pick top for the side of Unicorns of Love. Um, and so that's why you see the bot lane focused on the bans. And for, for C9, a little surprised to see the Jace ban in that sense. I mean, Boss has played it, I believe, this, this tournament. Um, yeah, he's got the one game on yep. it. So I, I can see them just trying to get rid of some annoying strong champions, but I, I expect Boss to be getting the, the counter pick here. All right, well, Leona is actually going to get banned, so Vulcan going to have to show us a new champion. They could also have taken it there as well. It's pretty good into the MF, but maybe they have other plans here. Galio, the other ban there, which I assume is mostly a support ban, actually. So most likely. Um, potentially don't want to have to deal with a. Galio Senna just having a lot of pushing power that can be annoying. Also, if you're talking about topside counter pick, maybe there is a Galio comp like Camille Galio, and you're, you're trying yep. to break some of that stuff up. Um, I will also say, uh, with the Silas locked in, it does make the Amumu pick kind of awkward for the side of C9. So the, the support pinch coming in is more difficult for them to deal with, and it's actually the early Scion. 
Yeah, just blinding Scion saying, what do you have, Fudge? Well, so you say Fudge, but bot lane sent a Scion. You oh, can run that. Oh, true. Um, I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff you can do with Senna. She makes the draft a little bit unpredictable. <laughs> and we did see that C9 actually, you know, has had some wrenches thrown at them in draft phases, like having the Lilia flex from jungle to top and yesterday and uh, the build path adaptations that came in from Fudge. So they're, they're a team that... You know, they can throw some some uh, curveballs at you, but they can also hit the curveballs when you pitch in at them. Yeah, and uh, this is quite the potential answer if that is the, the matchup in top lane. You know, Scion pretty self-sufficient, pretty safe, pretty blindable in a lot of situations, but uh, Gangplank's quite the beat. Uh, even if the lane you know goes okay, Gangplank's probably going to be farming up a storm, and I would be terrified to see if I just <laughs> Gangplank like, make like 10 barrels. That's what happens though, right? That's how Gangplank works. You have yeah. like 25 barrels pop out every time you hit E and then everyone explodes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the Gangplank pick is, is interesting. I, I like it given that you, like I said, don't know where the Siren's going and, and Boss has not had a great tournament so far necessarily. So you, it's a little bit of a call out saying like, I'm going to pick a scaling champion that's decent in lane and, you know, try and punish it. Especially if the Siren's actually going top. It, it's not the, the roughest lane phase at all for the, Ooh, for the GP. This would be so spicy. I don't even know where it's going is the other thing. All right, now I think I have an idea. And I think you are right, Mark. I think it is yeah. Senna Sion in the bottom lane. Camille going to be the counter pick there up in top. So that's why I think the, the Galio ban made some sense. Um, they had blocked in Camille once before, and there's potentially calling that out. So nice prep there by C9. Unicorns of Love still having some things to, to throw at C9. That, that Sion pick ending up going in the bot lane, trying to, to bait C9. But uh, C9 just go with a safe, blindable GP. Yeah, also, uh, I guess to keep track, Vulcan is actually on Rel this time. It's the champion again. He's played more than more than enough times. Definitely combines nicely with the, uh, my brain, Misfortune. Like you said, uh, with Silas in the mix, a Mumu is way worse. Uh, it's kind of like giving your opponent... It's like, it always happens. Like, level 4 Mumu always means level 6 Silas, and it's always a tragedy. Yeah, I mean, a Mumu this tournament has been such a disappointment. He, he's been the biggest disappointment I've seen since... Genshin Impact's first year anniversary rewards. <laughs> I don't, I don't. If you get the reference, you get the. I don't understand like the, the details of the reference, but the implication is funny enough. Yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to know. Mumu has been disappointing as well. You need to know. Uh, this tournament so far, considering how much hype he got in Solo and stuff like that. Um, but like you said, not in this game. Passed over, and for understandable reasons, even if you think Amumu is strong, you don't want to pick it. Even if MF and Amumu is broken, you don't want to play it into, into Silas as, as we've seen before. And also, Senna, Scion, gonna end up being a pretty annoying lane. Um, they have a lot of pushing power and wave clear just with Senna Q through the lane. Um, we'll have to see. I'll, I'll look it up if it's E or Q max for if I can find a Senna Scion lane to see which one ends up going, or we'll just watch and see what he ends up doing with it. But it's a relatively uninteractive lane that's going to be harass-focused, I assume. Yep, and looks like Santa's is the one going to be taking the farm at least early on, which you love to see. Does have the Spectral Sickle already built up. And uh, as a reminder, you can chat with us, of course. Get your tweets out there. Maybe we feature on the broadcast. Go ahead and uh, chat with Verizon 5G or chat. Uh, we had someone ask what our duo name was yesterday. We still haven't decided. So maybe you have other questions. We're happy to field them. Yeah. I, I Do we have answers? Probably not. I, but I read a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, none, they were okay ones. Some some baking jokes. I think a baker's mark was my favorite. But I, uh, is there what is a baker's mark? It, I assume it's just a pun on. Okay, I didn't know um, if that was like a thing. No, like I you don't stamp think so. your pastries with a certain color, Ooh. or like you know, like how sometimes you have like those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, branding irons. I guess you <laughs> do. <laughs> that sounds like a really like violent term for it. I just don't know what it, what it's called. <laughs> Maybe. You know what? That's something I'll have to explore later. But for now, it is going to be uh, Anonasic teaming up with the bottom lane here, starting on the right side. Yep, no tricky level one invades. Um, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen Unicorn's Love maybe find a setup, but their level one is just not not great for it, a lot of these champions. Unless you're doing something tricky with Sion, which you can do, you know, where you kill yourself on some buff, you know, if they snuck into topside and you steal the blue away from Sin. Maybe maybe something like that, but, you know, I can understand not going for it. Worth noting, uh, Siren did take TP, so um, kind of, you know, you've seen bot laners do that before when it's the AD carry in a matchup that they don't feel particularly threatened by. Um, and I, I, like I said, I expect this to be pretty uninteractive of a lane, so it makes sense. Uh, Sven early on trying to abuse the range before more levels get put into Scion in the EQ, combined with the Senna Q, starts being able to push the wave extremely quickly. Yeah, there is some uh, potential, like, Scion throws a minion, Senna Qs it, so you can really get the long range well, snipes happening. Well, you get the uh, the Senna Bomb, so you <laughs> you land your E 
on the uh, the minion, and then you shout the minion at them, and it lands the yeah. route. Oh, that's even better. All right, I'm excited. Whether we'll, will, will we see it come up? Probably not. But if the fact that it can happen is already. Funny I mean, enough. yeah, we'll see. There's like there should be like the zillion bombs, you know. You put yeah, the, yeah. the zillion on, you <laughs> shout it with that. I assume it's the same thing. We'll see. Alrighty, well, 2v2 right now looking pretty good for Card. Oh Ooh. my goodness, Vulcan's in there. Hedzik net ready to go, and Argonaut's flashing out of there. Okay, uh, C9 wanting to get aggro on the bot lane there. Trades flashing Knight for just flash, so then it might be able to heal up. Now Blabber's on the invade. Smites for both junglers here, actually, so it might just be a smite fight, but Blabber has all the vision, and honestly, kid in the queue. Oh, oh, he got it! Blabber just barely missmote that. Yeah, it's a rough one for Blabber, losing a lot of time now. Uh, a good idea given how much of an advantage Fudge had in the top lane. GP can be notoriously difficult for melee matchups to deal with early on with his trial by... Ooh! Ooh, Fudge getting tagged, a bad time. The Fudge already burnt Fudge! I think he bit off a little more than he could chew. Indeed he did. Boss is going to grab first blood. C9 getting a little sloppy in the early game here. And Anonisic punishing them twice in a row. Blabber, like you said, with the miss smite. And then Fudge there with a bit of a greedy recall. Uh... I think he should have known that that was warded out, and he should have known that Anonistic was in the area after stealing the red buff. Um, nicely done there to land that Q and then get the follow with boss and chase down sequence. Well, we'll see if we can add to the C9 reaction cam gifts later on. That was definitely <laughs> a feature of yesterday's games, which was very fun. But I mean, I love the move from Blabba. It is just kind of like, you know, a small little m micro mistake to, to smite, I think, a little bit early. I think it was sub 50 HP, and Anonistic was able to steal it away. Uh, given how Push the soul into it. That was the right play for sure. Just again, you mismanage your damage a little bit. Uh, Fudge is definitely inexcusable in the top lane there. That is uh, not a play you should be making, and I don't think it's one he'll make again. Unfortunately, you know, caught on camera. Uh, always an unfortunate in a game that potentially qualifies you to the next portion of the World Championship. Yeah. Um, so, not <laughs> what you want to see for a start for C9. Uh, not the end of the world either, but this is one of the win conditions that Unicorns Love wants to turn on for Boss here. Uh, he does like to play a lot of carry champions, and if the Camille gets snowballing, uh, GP is a champion that can get pretty exploitable. And so, if No Man's gets unlocked and he can start coming up here, uh, Anonisic starts snowballing. You know, you have a, like I said, that bot lane that feels pretty uninteractive. The Scion can alt down the lane up top and then TP back bot lane. Like, there's a lot of plays that they actually have available in their team comps to to try and snowball against this GP. Yeah, it feels like, given the texture of this draft, you are, as you said, playing through this Camille lane, right? Like, center is basically another sport. Scion is just a frontliner. Silas is all about affecting your side lanes, and the best one for him to try and play through if you can is top lane. And another six been really active in this early game, which is great to see this Lee Sin looking pretty good early on, which is pretty common, right? These junglers have a ton of reps on that champion throughout their career. But it is nice to see Unicorns are low off to a good start here, even though the solo lanes are still looking good. I mean, Perks is doing what he can to try and hold these waves and get a CS lead versus Nomads, you know, reopen up the lane kingdom for business. But Nomads is just playing back, playing with respect, knows he doesn't have to do much other than let Perks kind of dictate the wave early on. Yeah, Perks has had a very good tournament. We've seen him set up ganks with Blabber, manipulate waves quite well, uh, and exploit summoner advantages yesterday. When he had the Trindamere pick, um, you know, they did a really good job of playing around that and snowballing him. I mean, everyone's memeing the uh, <laughs> the not pressing R and the reaction cans and all that stuff. All great <laughs> moments, but it's worth noting, like, he actually had an incredible game in the early game to, to get himself ahead. Yeah, for sure. Looks great on Silas, looks great on Trindamere. Now looking good on LeBlanc. Perks is definitely demonstrating his versatility as a player, which has always been one of his biggest assets. Teaming up with Vulcan now. He's been a little bit later to get out of this lane, but is pretty reliable in his uh, movement around the map. He has been consistently getting out of lane here for Cloud9. I think it's one of the reasons he and Sven like to play so aggressively at level 1 and 2. Blabberall now actually kind of trading places with Vulcan, who's wrapped around the other side. They are really trying to bait No Man's in here. Yeah, putting a lot of pressure to mid lane. Uh, might be able to get him now. Here we go, but Ananasik off to the side, and uh, he's going to show himself, and Ananasik's going to say, hey, get away. No man's going to be protected there. Yep, in the meantime, Sven had to back off on the bot lane. Had to be careful as the minion wave comes in. Vulcan should be able to get down there in time to stop a potential punish, and because they saw Ananasik in the mid lane, uh, made it a lot less threatening for Sven there to know that he didn't need to worry about getting three-man dove. Um, but we'll have to see now that they have the pressure advantage after that failed C9 roam, uh, if they're actually able to steal this uh, Cloud Drake away. Yeah, it looks like they will get it here. Labber in the area, but 
Fizzy doing the red. Looks like Unicorns of Love should be able to secure this. So despite all the soul and pressure that Cloud9 were applying in the early stages of their lanes, it does feel like things are bouncing out a little bit. No Man's is six, still has TP ready. Perks has already used that TP relatively early on. And Nanasic actually maybe trying for a visit here in mid lane, but No Man's is playing with fire, getting himself nice and low. I mean, Kingslayer can help you a lot, but you are really trying to bait Perks into something here as so Nanasic is just going to come in and help you shove in the lane. Yeah, not trying to actually pick a fight with Perks. They're just knowing that Perks is relatively low mana. My team's on Cloud Drake. I want to get this reset off. So able to finish pushing that wave in with the help of Nanasic, like you said, and most of C9 accounted for, made it pretty safe. And a slower paced game, I think. Um, both teams feeling the pressure of how important this game is. C9 wanting to avoid tiebreakers. As much as people are memeing like, lose the game on purpose, then lose the tiebreaker for yeah, CSI, yeah. so <laughs> then beat Hamwa so yeah, you can yeah. get it to Group C, you know? Like, um, I, I still think that that would be extremely risky to do, and C9 seems like they are more focused on just qualifying for planes. Yep, or makes sense. Stage, excuse me. Makes sense. Then also maintain the NA undefeated at Worlds, which is, you know, it's good for how long Gotta it ride that as long as we exactly. can. Exactly. <laughs> Does it last very long? Liver's <laughs> turn not gonna get started. Boss Whoa. ready, level seven. Gonna go in for it. And now C9 trying to fight back with Vulcan a little too low. TP coming in. That's a very nice GP ulti. Fudge actually does take up boss, but Santa's in. Gets the ulti down. Fudge finds the flash. Blabber does fall as well, so it's a one for one so far. But maybe gonna be two for one. Unicorns will love to kill the double perks. Oh, trying to no. make a massive play, but that is an overextension. Perks dancing back around. That might be alright. Does have the W coming back up, but it's not there yet. And Anasik missing that Q and Perks. He's just trying to run away. There's so much distance here between him and the incoming mini wave. Santa's going to get chained up. Perks trying to dance around it, but he can't dance for any longer as Santa's finally secures that kill. All right, Unicorns of Love making a play. I thought that was really over aggressive by Boss to start out. Jumping into a GP like that, a little bit ahead of the rest of your team, scared me. But Vulcan did not have six yet to get his full lockdown sequence on top of the, the GP AoE. And then you saw the teleport coming in for Santos, one of those things that we're talking about that they have the advantage in. It allowed them to get extra men to that play. They win it pretty pretty handily. They were low at the tail end of it, so it looks like they're going to have to sack the um, Rift Herald and just take the kills and be happy with that. Uh, but overall, you know, a, a really nice start to the game for Unicorns of Love. I, I feel like I don't know if they've had a gold lead this thus far in the tournament at 10 minutes. You know, it feels like a lot of the games just went south pretty quickly for them. Um, here's what I'm talking about. You know, like I thought that was an overextension, but Vulcan was not able to have that much CC to lock them up in. And so even though it looks like they're pretty far ahead of the play, you see that teleport channeling for the GP starts at one for one, or excuse me, the Scion. And then once it completes, you have these extra men. Senna also roaming up, you know, getting a, the advantage on MF, who's, you know, you see Sven coming from mid lane trying to get involved there, but just a little bit too far behind. And the extra man helps them win this fight three for one. That's a really nice slash shot. And honestly, actually on the initial Incoming distortion and perks. I mean, he is playing great. This is something that you can sometimes escape out of, but unfortunately, perks just gets clipped. Really nice Q placement, actually, from Santa's. Like, yeah. not a first time sign player. <laughs> no, no, clearly not. You see, Unicorns of Love feeling good about this. <laughs> feeling really good about this. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge fight. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Coming out of it. Unlucky. Uh, I was going to say that I liked what Perks tried to do there in terms of getting on top of the uh, Senna, trying to get the Execute, just not able to actually get it. And then the, the fancy feat to avoid some of the CC, did everything he could, but play was just too far gone at that point. Yeah, I mean, do what you can, but Cloud9 have definitely shown uh, that they, they're willing to make the plays, which is good. Like, I think there's always the argument of, like, do you want to see your teams be proactive or do you want to see them be like super clean and consistent? And ideally you get both. But if you have to choose, I think I'm always on the side of, hey, I'd rather you like, you know, especially early on in a tournament where maybe you're, you feel like you outskill uh, your opponents a little more on average than you would say against whatever group you end up in if you do qualify for the main stage. I think Cloud9 have like definitely had some oopsies, like apart from like obvious mechanical mistakes, which haven't even been that many. Like they've taken fights that have not, Gone that well. They've definitely been pretty aggressive with how they're trying to close out games. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think, obviously, they've hit more than they've missed. Otherwise, it wouldn't be 3-0. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. It's... I think it's just something where, in that instance, that maybe was a play you, you didn't want to go for. Uh, bad news for uh, Aaron031995. Uh, Cloud9's 4-0 not looking like the best start right now. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Unicorns of Love. It I, is still alive. I, it's still alive. It's not dead. I mean, it's just a 
500 gold lead right now for Unicorns of Love. And like you said, C9, they, they take a lot of fights. Some work out, some don't. But I, I feel like the gold lead ending up on No Man's uh, is pretty frustrating for the LeBlanc, who's going to have to match him in the side lane 1v1, as well as the fact that the GP behind the Camille a little bit, you know, does have more CS. Uh, both lane setups, you know, you see them actually in, in a situation where they, they swap them so the GP's up against the, the Silas, but it looks like they want to get out of that. Yeah, Vulcan also going to find an Anasik here. Nana Sick, they're gonna get out. So good coverage there. Make sure Perks is okay. Uh, Camille is very good at setting up for Lee Sin. Obviously, it's pretty easy. You just walk up and click R. Flabber they're also roaming around. Still has that Rift Herald that they took. That was one of the things they got out of the exchange uh, in top lane that happened. But we'll see where Blabber can drop the Herald because that's that'll pretty easily shrink this gold lead to half or even maybe back to even, uh, depending on how many plates you know how much damage you can get done with it. Kraken Slayer complete for. Zven, nice. like it in this game, uh, we always talk about, what are you hitting? What's the most likely thing that you're, you're doing with, with your damage? Uh, yes, you'll be dropping your ultimate, but you're also probably going to be slapping a Scion. Uh, so, want a little bit higher DPS build, like it here. Um, Unicorns of Love, you know, they have a, a pretty good 1-3-1 one one setup. I think C9 with the MF and GP clearly have a better 5v5 team fight. But if you get ahead on your solo lanes and you can kind of control the pace of the game, there's no reason you have to be fighting fair and honest 5v5s, especially with, we already talked about, Santa's having that global TP. You can actually, I, I wonder, you know, Scion 131 mid lane sounds kind of funny to me. I just am <laughs> used to seeing him in a side lane, you know? Uh, but maybe you can like alt down river or like make some tricky plays. So uh, I'm really excited to see where they go from here, having a, a slight advantage in the game once these maps start opening up, how Unicorns of Love exactly execute on this team comp, because the solo lanes make sense to me. Exactly what Argonaut and Santos do, other than shove in mid and roam, which is, is fine, you know, like yep. that that's 100% a good thing to do in a one through one all right, we'll see what happens, but nice collapse here for Cloud9. Looking for Nomads. Good ult to steal, actually. Grabs the Zin ult. Flabber now going to go in for it. TP coming through. It's counter TP, though. Center ult these nights also. The shutdown lands in for Vulcan. Now Fudge trying to fight out boss here with Perks. Not swim, but Scion, he's made his way up so speedily. <laughs> just zooms up there, and now Blabber is going to get absolutely deleted by the Camille as boss finds the ulti and the kill. Fudge is low. Sven is here, but I don't know if they've got anything under this tower. Fudge is not that healthy. Vulcan already used all his tools to engage. Cloud9 maybe going to go for it here, but... Have to back away. I mean, you know help is coming. Cloud9 gonna disengage. Yeah, Argonaut was making his way up there. He had a nice Senna ult to initially get a shield on top uh, of No Man's. It didn't seem to do too much to save him, but uh, the, the TPs came through. Some really nice drifting by Santas getting through the jungle. I wanna like see like exactly where did he start ulting? Did he ult from mid and weave it all the way through that river path that's behind the wall? I mean, you can do that, but I, I'm, I'm really curious where you started the ult from. I mean, he got there fast yeah. to, to protect the TP. Because when I saw that TP coming in, I was like, oh my god, this is so bad. He's, it's going to be a 1v4 for boss. But then because Santos got up there with his ultimate, they were able to turn that fight around. Even more impressive, uh, because we have two dragons taken, and it's a mountain rip. So there's like extra stuff in the way, potentially, right? Ooh. Whereas if it's infernal, it's even more open as fudge. Fighting a Nana Sick, but Blabber did drop the Herald in mid. It will make it here to take the plates. That's really nice for Perks to get a bit of extra gold. Yeah. So not wasted there for Blabber as Perks does chunk down Nomads. But again, UL are in to try and save their mid laner, who is getting bullet time. But Nomads going to have to flash. And Nana Sick finds the kick on his vents and flashes back in. The root lands though out of center, and Boss is able to take that kill. Nice job there by. Ananasek punishing Sven, who, you know, thought he had this easy setup onto No Man's. No Man's flashes out, able to get out of there. Baits Sven into dropping his ultimate in front of a Lee Sin, and, you know, you flash out, but the rest of Unicorn's Love was in there to punish him afterwards. Yeah, it's funny, you know, there's not the obvious MF stuff here as we have the x Factory replay. This was the top lane play you were talking about. Mark. Okay, so here's what's, what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Sion in the mid lane right here. I don't care what's on my screen at all. Look <laughs> at the mini map in your bottom right-hand corner. He starts ulting. He ults from mid lane all the way up through here. Look at him weave it Ooh. around to the left, then back to the right. He misses Perks here, but look how close he was. That's a nuts Scion ultimate. And it saves Boss, I think, who would have been trapped under that turf. He, if he hit any wall, you know, he shows up 10 seconds later, that's a dead boss. Uh, because they killed No Man so quickly, I thought it was going to be 1v4. And, and it saves this play, potentially double kill. It would have been a lot more turret plates. That's, actually, that's a massive Scion ult, even though it didn't hit. That's the greatest Scion ult miss I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> really nice. And now, top side is going to happen again here. The center ulti's out. That's a big shield, but it's not enough to save No Man's Blabber pops the ulti, flashes out of the way. Perks, a vocal force flashes as well, but another <laughs> stick finds the trade. Nice and easy. Santa's here again, and Perks is just getting kind of hit on. I mean, Santa's is smacking him away. Can't really do anything as LeBlanc against these tanky champions. Ven's up there, but he's just too late.
Why would it look like a bug on a windshield? <laughs> just got smacked by the ultimate of sound test there. This guy just cruising around in his silent mobile. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> Uh, nice punish there. Ends up only being a one for one. Blabber and a No Man's both dropping. Uh, but right now, this is a really fun game. Both teams going blow for blow. Unicorns love eking out leads slowly over the course of them. You know, you get this Rift Herald push in mid lane. You get some nice turret plays, but they get a kill back. You get a kill on the top side. Unicorns love get the kill back. Now they're going to grab their own Rift Herald. And the, the gold lead is slowly growing um, for Unicorns of Love. We'll have to see if they can find this back breaking play because I'm still a little worried at the C9 5v5 potential. It, it does not feel good that Unicorns of Love is getting a snowball a little bit with the, the Dragons. They got them pretty early on. The next one coming up in just a minute and a half, so you can potentially have three pre-20 minutes. We're gonna get the first tower as well. This Herald gonna be enough to grab that advantage. So this gold lead gonna spike up. We'll see what it is after this hit happens, but looks like, uh, yeah. Not quite 2k, but getting close. 3v2 right now, though. Another thing uh -oh. about the face check. Blabber looking for the kill. Perks are the one to claim it. <laughs> That is justice for Blabber. Even the GP all getting dropped on top. A 4v1, basically. Uh, Anonisic there, who's been having a really good game. Uh, feels good to probably get that shutdown on him. Yeah, 1-1 one, one and 5 down. I uh, didn't get all the kills, which is good. He's been donating them to No Man and Boss. Uh, we talked about, you know, in the early stages of this game, Boss is kind of the obvious conduit to play through here for Unicorns of Low. Definitely enabled right now. Sundra finished, plenty of kills under his belt. No Man's also feeling empowered on the Silas level 11 now, has his items under him, can start maybe side landing or grouping, uh, depending on how Unicorns of Love want to distribute their resources around the map. And sure, right now, Boss is getting overloaded, so can't really get too aggressive. But if the Unicorn's plan is to play 1-3-1 one, one, or even a 4-1 with this Camille, they're really set up uh, with this, even with this gold advantage not being that big, they're under a thousand now, actually. There's still, like, you've gotten the gold you need to execute that plan if that's what you're trying to do here. And like you said, I'm starting to wonder, like, I don't know what Cloud9 does, because Sanders is everywhere. This is like... It's, it's pretty crazy. It's priority man. male Sion. He's yeah. just shipped overnight everywhere. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed with this so far. I mean, even Argonauts, um... Senna. I, there's so many times you watch a Senna ult come flying in as someone dies. The shield's too late, they don't land the damage part, and it just looks pretty troll. He, he's been on point. Even if they haven't saved the person, he's at least showing that he's landing them in time. That's why he has 100% kill participation. He's doing a good job on the Senna. Um, and they're showing the global utility that she's able to bring when you're in these 1-3-1 one -one lane setups, even when C9 is the one making plays. Right, stolen gameplay guilty. team. Bog with my brain for a second. But... <laughs> yeah, it looked a little troll. <laughs> But uh, still, the trades continue to go in Unicorns of Love's favor. They're 3-1 to one now in towers. They got the third dragon. That's massive. Cloud9 actually wanted to take a tower top lane, try and open up the map. Took the easy one, but lost the drake as a result. Perhaps weren't interested in contesting for it anyway, but now they're down three dragons and 1,500 gold as Vulcan face checks, and he's just dead here. Looking for an engage, but not one he wanted. And sick going to claim the kill. Deep in the enemy jungle. Blabber. Faded over with the blast gun, the ball time is there. Sent an ulti to try and disengage it, but Blabber's got to run. There's nothing here, it's 5v4, Cloud9. I'm going to be routed by Unicorns of Love. No man's flashed in, he does get himself killed, but I think the follow-up is well worth it. Two more now on the table for Unicorns of Love as perks will fall. Nicely done by Unicorns of Love, deep in the enemy jungle, finding the initial pickoff on the rel. We talk about C9's 5v5, but that's kind of critical, the fact that you need it to be Rel starting the fight. You want to suck everyone in together, land all this AoE. If you kill her early on in the fight, C9's team comp kind of becomes disjointed. You know, GP, how does he lock people down for his ultimate? Who's going to be going in with Blabber? Perks doesn't, you know, he just wants to be picking off low priority targets. And so that kill allowed it to become a really scrappy fight. And then Unicorns of Love kept finding these, these kills and outplaying C9 there. And now up 3,000 gold alongside those three turrets and three dragons. Like, looking good. It is looking really good for Unicorns Love as we watch this one again. Yeah. No Man's is deep in enemy territory. Yeah, you're just not ready this early on in the game to be having to worry about face checking that particular brush. And now, once he's dead, you know, see, I want to punish. They see Boss on the top side. They're like, okay, this is still a 4v4. Hold on, don't have time to talk about that. Yeah, again, No Man's is getting targeted. C9 just trying to 3v1 any lane they can find and give themselves some gold. It's actually a 5v1 as No Man steals the LeBlanc distortion, but that's not going to be enough. Does go back. <laughs> it looks cute, but who's going to grab the kill? Who gets the donation? No Man's. It's going to be fun to collect. Yeah, Fudge probably needs a little bit of help in the side lane. Good recipient. But of course, if you five mana Silas and take that long to kill him, you are going to be losing stuff elsewhere on the map. Argonaut here, able to get a lot of turret damage down. Maybe not be able to finish it off, but weakening it to be able to claim it later on in the game. And during that time as well, Boss working down the bot lane. 
And again, I mean, Cloud9 doing what they can, but it's just treading water almost, right? Getting what gold you can, trying to maybe believe in the scaling and the 5v5 that you've drafted for yourself here. Uh, you know, it's one thing to find a great 5v5. It's another to find that same 5v5 down, you know, five, 6,000 gold. Uh, at some point, it starts not to matter how good your engage is if the enemy just has more gold than you can handle. So Cloud9 do need to keep making some sort of trade and giving gold to their uh, their players in ways other than farm because Unicorns of Love are not playing a game slow enough where they can just sit back and relax. No, Unicorns of Love is being super aggressive right now, always looking for opportunities to find people in the jungle or just trying to counter out C9's plays, and they're smart when they pick that battle. You know, no man's there getting 1v4'd. <laughs> no one was like, maybe I could help him out, really. Like They were just like, okay, let him die. No man, stay alive as long as you can. And they, they actually did a good job. Picking their battles in that sense and not just always insta collapsing. It's something sometimes people get baited into that. Like if they have the Shen, for example, as a champion that can join in fights, it's like, well, I don't think you actually want to just blow your ult defensively in a fight you're going to lose anyways. No oh, boss, this looks real oh. rough for Perks. Just easy solo kill as uh, Santa picks up yet another assist. This is what we're talking about. If you fall behind, it's 1 3 1 time for Unicorns of Love, and you just have a really tough time in all these lane setups. And the global ability, Argonaut did not need <laughs> to help out there, but you know, he'll grab another assist if he can. Uh, did fall off the 100% kill participation, unfortunately, but um, otherwise, having a fantastic game. And this is his second Senna game he's ever played uh, on his pro career. Santos's first Scion game. Uh, not something I would have ever expected. I, I don't think anyone would have had this prep ready. Maybe Sansa is a solo queue Scion beast yeah. that I don't know about. <laughs> um, you know, I admit maybe that's that's true, but just I, I've been so impressed with their bot lane this game. Oh, for sure. His boss again has to weasel out of a, a 4v1. Kalda continue to find pickoffs, which is good. Boss a little bit too far forward, perhaps, and the kill will go over to Zven, who grabs the shutdown. That is a lot of extra gold yeah. to Misfortune. That is a tough one to give up. I think so far, Unicorns of Love in their 1 through 1 has done a good job of having pressure elsewhere on the map. Even if you're dying, like we saw in No Man's, you know, it's usually a situation where it's like, well, we're getting something else. Here, the rest of his team was kind of resetting. There hadn't been time for the Silas to push out top yet. So it's a really painful death to lose on your pretty fed Camille while giving C9 an opportunity to get pressure. Because if you had Mandalay pushed, even if you die there, they don't get mid turret as well. Now, not only are you giving up a kill, which is what they had only lost before, you're losing objectives on the tail end of it too, as well as map control right as Mountain Dragon spawning. That was a disastrous death. You know, we'll have to see if Unicorns of Love can stabilize and still get uh, into the river here. Vulcan looking for the angle. Cloud9 want to fight by the looks of things. Boss is back up, but he doesn't have TP. So can't make it in just yet, but won't be too far away. Perk's going to lock up the Scion, but that's going to take way too long. And Cloud9 now going to fall back and start the Dragon, but they have to finish this very quickly. Yeah, looking probably for a burn situation here, but Unicorns of Love is more or less in the area. Have to see if they can... Get it's going to be 50 and Nautisix in there. They're just going to fight for the dragon. Who's going to grab the soul? It is Blemmer that gets the smite, but what does the fight look like at the end of it all? Full time over the top is nice. On top of the GP ulti, Cloud9. Team fighting their way out of the dragon pit. As Perks is able to take down Sex. As Fudge now trying to turn tail and run because they've already lost two on the other side. It's Unicorns alive. The wallet just too powerful. Fudge now going to get locked up and killed. A nice stun there for Vulcan. It's only going to delay the inevitable. And they got the dragon, but they still lost the fight. Three for two. Unicorns of Love able to get a couple of kills. Losing the dragon feels bad though. It delays this kind of timer that they were putting on Cloud9. Uh, they were able to grab that Mountain Soul, get the extra shielding, would have made it almost impossible to win those 1v1s that keep breaking out in the side lanes. Um, still well done. I mean, Anonasek was in the pit. They, they were able to get in there. Um, really close fight, but still three for two. You still feel okay. Have pressure afterwards to, to get these waves pushing in your favor. Yeah, still the gold leads at least being like floated by C9, but still 3,000 ahead for Unicorns of Love. So not falling further behind as well. Let's just one again. So this was really well done by Nomance. He's going to lock up Rell to stop her from being able to get in the pit. Right there, that pullback. When she tried to hop the wall, it stopped them from comboing Anonisic and Boss in the pit. I mean, it's still a decent ult by Sven there, but without his Rell peeling, you know, he's pinned up against the wall that he just gets obliterated. Here comes Santa's Vulcan. Very nice stopwatch. What's going to happen on the other end? They're TP in Cloud9. Join for everybody here, but now they've kind of committed themselves to the fight. Fudge in the middle of everyone as Unicorns of Love are looking to make the play. GP oh. ulti stolen there for Silas. Looks so good for Unicorns of Love. Fudge already dead. Blavolo, Camille charging into the front lines. A nice stun there for Vulcan, but they still can't get the kills. The Nanasik is going to try and assassinate Sven. He does get it done. And Unicorns of Love just so aggressive, winning every single portion of the fight. Down 
the tower as they go. They dive Cloud9 and smash them in that fight. 4-4-0 four, four, for Unicorns Love. They're TPing back in. 30 second death timers. I wonder if you're looking at the thing and end the game here. Maybe they're just grabbing inhibitor and backing off the Baron. We'll have to see exactly how aggressive they want to get here, but they're looking pretty healthy. You have Senna to try and top people off. Remember, this is for US tournament life. If they don't win here, they cannot go any further in the play. And so they're going to try and make the play. Plava, who's trying to pull the wave. He's stop watching. He's doing everything he can, but the ace finally comes through. Fudge is back alive. Rolls up in two seconds, but Unicorns of Love, I think they've got it done. They do it have the Nexus in their side, Cloud9 trying to defend as best they can, but they cannot do it. Unicorns of Love are keeping themselves at world. Unicorns of Love, baby. Last minute, their backs are against the wall. They go for a creative draft. They end up in a 1-3-1 with this incredible bot lane, and they destroy Cloud9. That was what, a 26-minute game, obliteration by them. They had such a good performance there. And like you said, keep their dreams alive. This means they are playing later on today to potentially stay in the play-in stage and then have an opportunity at the main stage. And with that, we do get more League of Legends. Let's we are go. now guaranteed two tiebreakers. So now our day mark is as long as it was yesterday. It's just four games. Chaos reigns. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and if you're a Cloud9 fan, you're disappointed. Stumble at the last minute. You know, it just feels like it can never come too easy. Couldn't have been a 4-0. Um, and for, it's scary, you know? This is a DFM that, yes, they beat earlier on in the tournament, but that was a terrifying DFM we saw earlier today and we, we saw yesterday. So uh, this is not a lock for them at all. They're going to have to go back, take a look at what went wrong this game, and get ready for, for a surging DFM. Yeah, the, we like coming into this group, Everyone kind of felt like, yeah, this group's going to be really close. And I think we're finally getting an idea of why. Because Unicorns feel like they're back in line. Dead FM been powering up all tournament long. And uh, this Tyrex is going to be extremely spicy. Super close. I mean, Beyond Gaming looks vulnerable. I don't think you can count Unicorns to love out either. Well, fun one there. But as a man of culture and taste, I encourage you to listen to our brand new world. Our anthem, burn it down on the League of Legends official playlist on Spotify. As well as right here while we take a quick break, we'll see you on the other side for our very first tiebreaker. They see where the legends come from. You know what a hero looks like. Pretty little flower, won't you sit back down and go play nice? So keep talking, keep laughing. One day.
everyone to the State Farm Analyst Desk Sheepy. He's uh, worn his glitter jacket for the occasion, so that's great. The Unicorns of Love, uh, they came to life in the final hour. It, it really was, I can't emphasize it enough, kind of the last thing they could do. And for C9, it was the last hurdle before locking group stage immediately. And I think we can call this a massive upset if we look at how the, this stage has gone so far for both Cloud9 and Unicorns of Love. Yeah, I mean, because C9 came in, we weren't necessarily sure where they'd be at. Like, I wasn't sure having, having watched them in North America. And then UOL, uh, I think, underperformed a little bit according to how closely, uh, how tight we expected this group to be. Um, however, I really enjoyed how UOL managed to punish uh, a lot of plays that just slightly did not go in C9's favor and a few mistakes they made on that top side of the map that we've been talking about so much. Um, I want to pull up the standings first for a second so that we get an overview. We do have two tiebreakers now. So basically, um, the first game that's coming up next is going to be um, Beyond Gaming versus Unicorns of Love for that fourth spot to get into the best of fives. And Cloud9 will play Detonation Focus Me uh, for a direct seeding into the group stage of the World Championship. So now that we have that information, let's talk about indeed how they did it. Uh, Chronicler Emily already mentioned the fact that Unicorns of Love seemed uh, prepared, right? And proactive is what, what my main takeaway was from this game. Yeah, what I really liked was not only did they go for like a kind of creative draft angle, um, which in of itself, like it wasn't like the sign had the biggest impact, but it was the fact that the teleport was available. And we talked earlier today about like what made C9 so good. And I think it was in large uh, part due to how well they were able to skirmish. And I think the turning point for this game was when they tried to commit to one of those skirmishes, not taking into account that Santos could just teleport in. And then from mm -hmm. that point on, there were more and more fights and every time UL just got the better trade. Yeah, I mean, I th and I think if you look at a lot of the sustained damage coming out, we've talked about how much No Man's is such a key to pressure coming out of UOL. Um, and the Silas is a really great pick for him here because he, it enables him to stay alive so long in fights, especially with the Senna. Like, they had a lot tankier of a comp, and once they were able to get ahead, I just really enjoyed how much more comfortable they seemed in their overall play to close it out. Yeah, absolutely. With a lead, um, we see that often from kind of teams in planes. Mm -hmm. They look like a completely different team. Let's take a look at some of the skirmishes because I think you hit the nail on the head there, Chronicler. Uh, maybe not taking into account anything that could happen. And the Unicorns of Love honestly playing out most of the skirmishes to a T. And it's, I think, something that really speaks to what the main difference is when you look at these playing teams versus the, uh, you know, like the main region teams. And that is that teams like not uh, Hanwha Life notwithstanding, which kind of uh, flipped that script, is that mechanically, if you give these teams the opportunity to fight uh, in a good scenario, they will still fully commit to that. And it's not like the mechanical gap is so big that you just automatically win these, right? And um, we've seen this happen, and I think that's the main reason why the teams uh, from the emerging regions do so much better when they do find a lead, because it actually allows them to play the more proactive play style that, for a lot of these teams, they're the best in their region, they're so well uh, accustomed to. Mm -hmm. um, let's then also maybe uh, talk about C9 and what they showed in this game. Um, Emily, you know, we talked a lot about how they have shown different styles and they seemed very much on the same page. What will they have to clean up to grab that group spot versus the FM? I mean, I think obviously uh, when it comes to some of the plays that they made, especially on top side, there are a few plays that didn't go their way. First of all, Fudge on that ward. Um, it kind of mitigated a lot of the pressure that he had been able to create on the top side of the map that was going to be key for C9 to kind of end up snowballing this game. The smite didn't go Blabber's way uh, when he invaded with that pressure behind him. Um, so it comes down to like, you know, kind of really, really small things that ended up creating a space for UOL to have these skirmishes, to make these plays and really respond to what C9 wanted to do. Um, so I think for C9, uh, I actually did still really like, like for example, some of, some of their itemization choices here. Um, I think they should be able to regroup a, and come back pretty strong, but they're gonna have a, like a, I say a tough, a tough single game. Yeah. Sounds really weird to say, but like honestly going up against DL 
DFM is is going to be really a, a big match for them, especially with the way that DFM have been able to bounce back. Oh, absolutely. It's just that you're kicking yourself because you're like, oh, we could have avoided all of this, right? We could have mm -hmm. avoided the tiebreaker and then a possible best of five. Um, but they're pro players and they have a game to regroup. So I'm sure we'll see the best forms of C9 and DFM. First, though, we'll be back in a few minutes for the first tiebreaker game, which is UOL versus Beyond Gaming. Don't go anywhere.